There's a lot of debate around the case involving Gypsy Rose Blanchard and the killing of her mother, Dee Dee. And there's one of two camps, either you're with Gypsy or you're against Gypsy, but in this video, I kind of want to talk about what's going on and bring up the possibility of, is Gypsy Rose Blanchard manipulating us? What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, something I like to do is just pull different topics from the news or pop culture or sometimes the YouTube community and try to see what lessons we can learn from them. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So, probably, I'm guessing, if you're watching this video, you know a bit about the Gypsy Rose Blanchard case. She is currently in prison right now for second degree murder of her mother, Dee Dee. Um, her boyfriend is actually the one who did the act, okay? She talked him into it, he's the one who committed the murder, all right? And anyways, one of the reasons this happened was Gypsy was a victim of Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Her mother made her believe that she had all these different illnesses, she was very abusive, she was very controlling, all sorts of things, and Gypsy's belief was that her only way out was through killing her mother, all right? And I wanna talk about this. So, I wanna talk about kind of the history of Gypsy Rose Blanchard and the possibility of us all being manipulated, but I wanna bring up a couple things that I just keep seeing just on various videos about Gypsy Rose Blanchard, including my own, right? Something that just keeps happening, keeps happening over and over and over again, is like two things. One of them is, somebody said that I lack compassion. Excuse me, I'm extremely compassionate. And I discussed this in one of the videos I did about Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Like one of the things is, is that I think we as a society need to learn is that most people, most, most people don't just become criminals, okay? Anything from theft or, you know, drug trafficking to even things like, even worse, like abuse and violence and things like that, up to murder. If you look at most of these cases, these people had a messed up childhood. This is one of the reasons why I believe in a few things, like early intervention, and using prison as rehabilitation. Like, we need to start realizing that most people in prison had a messed up life. I am very, very compassionate towards that, just as personally as the son of an alcoholic mother and as somebody who was an alcoholic and addict myself. I, I know um, a lot of people who came through the addiction treatments that I was working at who had very messed up childhoods. Now, the second thing I wanna talk about is the, the idea that you know, Gypsy Rose Blanchard, like this keeps coming up. She did not kill her mother, all right? It was the boyfriend that killed the mother. You guys, like, holy crap. Okay, listen, 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 just listen. Just me and you real quick. Charles Manson didn't kill anybody. And I can already hear now, be like, oh my God, how dare you compare Gypsy Rose Blanchard to Charles Manson? Okay, I get it. But I just wanna kind of put it in perspective for you. Charles Manson was an extremely manipulative man. He created his little cult, who went out and did some mass murdering, okay? And he ended up going to prison for life for this thing. And like, I don't know if you've learned about Charles Manson and his childhood, but it was not exactly a bed of roses, okay? He was originally named No Name. His mother tried to trade him for a pitcher of beer. He was sexually abused as a child. Like, so many different things happened to Charles Manson where you can look at it and wonder, okay, were these circumstances, were these circumstances what turned Charles Manson into the monster that he became? Because I would argue, probably, you know what I mean? Like, I, I am of the opinion, just, you know, I'm not a psychologist or anything like that, but just based on my own experience working with people at the treatment center I was at, my own studying, my own research and everything, there is more power in nurture than there is nature. All right, and there are some people who are just born psychopaths and things like that. But if you if you were to look at it statistically, most people who become criminals or do messed up things had a messed up childhood. That's just the fact. So to say that Gypsy Rose Blanchard did not kill somebody 
she manipulated somebody into killing somebody. Now, what we need to understand, and something I'm gonna make a video about is like the cycle of how this goes on through different generations, right? Like there's been recent news about Gypsy Rose Blanchard's uh, grandmother, you know, Dee Dee's mother, right? And you can see how this goes down the line. But here's what we need to understand about Gypsy Rose Blanchard. It is ingrained in her as a survival mechanism to manipulate, okay? Like Gypsy Rose Blanchard, since she was a child, she was taught a few things. She was taught that lying is okay, lying is a way of survival, and how to manipulate people, all right? Now, this isn't her fault. This is not her fault in any way, shape, or form. This is what her mother taught her, and her mother was trying to survive and keep the lie going. But Gypsy Rose Blanchard was taught how to lie and manipulate, all right? So she then, in turn, took that and she used that to convince her boyfriend, her then boyfriend, into killing her mother. So when I sit back and I look at the recent news and what's going on, um, you know, her getting engaged, her writing, um, you know, a letter to her, her fans. I, I put fans in quotation marks because I think, you know, even though I'm fascinated by like, you know, like serial killers and cases like this and cults and stuff, to say you're like a fan, I'm just like, ah, I don't know if I'd go that far, but. She does have some fans, but she's trying to convince her fans to write letters to try to get her early release. And like the issue that I see with this is, is that nobody's looking at the clear history of manipulation. Like nobody is looking at that, all right? And I know that um, Gypsy Rose Blanchard is getting mental health treatment in prison, probably not adequately for what she's been through. And this isn't something like that you just unlearn, you know, in a few years, right? This takes a lot of time. I have been sober for almost seven years now and lying, cheating, manipulating was something that I had to do in order to feed my addiction. And it's something that almost seven years later where it's still a struggle for me, but you know, like I, I try not to lie, I try not to manipulate. There's so many things that I have worked on for years, okay? Because that's something that helps keep me sober, so I'm in a little bit different situation. But, but I don't think enough people are asking themselves, like, is it possible that Gypsy Rose Blanchard is manipulating people because it is still part of her own human behavior? You see what I mean? Is it possible that she's trying to develop empathy, or uh, sympathy, not even empathy, but empathy and sympathy, I guess, to try to get people to understand why, why? And like, I think it just becomes really apparent when I go through the comment section, and it's, I think, I think this wouldn't be such a concern for me if people had more of a balanced argument, right? But from what I've seen in a lot of comments just across the internet is just like, yeah, she should have killed her. She should have killed her. There was nothing else she could have done. She could, she should have killed her. Now, if I'm playing devil's advocate against myself, I would argue, yeah, you know, she didn't know of another way out. She was, uh, you know, um, she didn't know what other options there, there were. She was legitimately afraid to leave. She thought that her mother would just find her and bring her back. She would convince the, these people that she's incompetent. I get it. I get all of those things, but like, it just scares me that there, there's a portion of humanity that believes that like this was a 100% justified murder. Like that really scares me. And I think that's why I'm really passionate about this. And I'm like, holy crap. You know what I mean? It's not like, it's not like Gypsy was like walking down a dark alley and like somebody pulled like a knife on her and she had to like kill the other person in order to survive. Like she could have left. She was afraid to leave because of what her mother had done. But I just see a lot of people justifying murder and that really scares me. And I don't know if I'm alone in this thought process, so I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. But like, let's have a discussion about this. Like, do you, do you have anybody who's manipulative in your life? Do you know anybody who used to be manipulative and now they're not? How long did it take them to get better? Because I think these are things that we really need to think about when people are running to the defense 
of somebody who convinced somebody to kill their own mother. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I just want to talk about this. I love just engaging in conversation, but these are my thoughts. So I would love to know yours as well. Uh, but like I said too, I have other videos planned. I want to talk about just, um, just kind of breaking the cycle of family abuse, whether it's verbal, physical, whatever it is. I'm gonna make a video about that at some point too. So anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you enjoy the channel and you wanna support what I'm doing here and get some exclusive perks and benefits, like our monthly Q&A, click or tap on that Patreon icon right there. All right, thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.